afternoon session. I am again your session chair. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce Daniel, who is going to talk about his open source uh, implementation of that form. Is the camera running? Thanks a lot for the introduction. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. And yeah, I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for the organizers. I really wish I had the chance to be in such a workshop six years ago when I started working on, a, on an implementation of F4. would have made my life much easier. I was not that lucky. Um, So, to, um, I hope this is going to be a little bit lighter than the morning session. I mean, this we had a lot going on this morning. This is going to be, you know, just eight slides, 18 slides should be pretty light, and um, I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the architecture, about the design of F4 version six, then about the the linear algebra package that I use and some experimental results and future work. <coughs> so, what is F4 version 6? Um, so this is the, the result of my master thesis, uh, which I finished in 2010 um, at the University of Cincinnati under the advice of Dieter Schmidt. Um, And the the the, um, so the thesis you can find online, and you can also find the source code. So after some arm twisting by some colleagues here, I published the the code uh, on Bitbucket under a GPL2 license. So if you if you Google F4 Kabarkas, you you would find both the thesis and the and the source code. Yeah, you can think of the thesis a, a little bit as a documentation of the source code. So the the source code is more or less well documented, but you know you can have you have additional uh, documentation in, in the thesis. Some more details. Um, so so some a little bit more about the implementation. So it, it implements. Uh, Jeff's F4, as described in the uh, 1999 paper, mm, it, it's only the, the only field supported is a GF256, but it should be easy to just you put your your favorite field there. Um, it also it's only you only uses a um, one monomial ordering, so greater than geographic order, but it should also be relatively easy to change the monomial ordering. Um, what should I say? Okay. So, here is a um, the F4 algorithm, as describing the, the basic F4 algorithm, the, there are minor changes in notation in my, in my thesis, but it's mostly just the same. Um, so you, I'm not going to say much about this. Um, here is the, the complete F4, which includes additionally, you know, doing the update, uh, an update function to introduce uh, polynomials and uh, reducing the pairs, so removing unnecessary pairs, and it also does the <coughs> simplify to, uh, to reduce some of the monomial, polynomial pairs, get rid of, uh, reduce them a little bit based on previous computation, based on the previous matrices. So the, the implementation is, implements all of these 
of this. And So let, let, let's talk a little bit about the, the design of my implementation. So here's a, a class diagram of the, of the implementation. So in the center we have a list, list poly, uh, which implements a list of polynomials. Uh, quite natural, this is not working right. It used to work until now. Try off and on and off. Let's see if yeah, yeah. how it's working. Okay, so list of polynomials. I'm just going to turn it off and speak loud, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So list poly implements a list of polynomials. Very natural. And it, it, the, mono, the coefficients are stored in a sparse matrix. And um, sparse matrix has a field where it includes, where it uh, stores the, the coefficients. Mm, there's a class monomial that gives all the support for a monomial. And there's a couple of structures for a poly-poly pair, so two polynomials, and a signature structure for monomial-polynomial pairs. <coughs> uh, nothing unusual there except there are a couple of things perhaps that are interesting. One is that there's no polynomial class. So at some point in between version two and version three of F of my implementation, I got rid of the polynomial class. So because of the matrix structure, matrix nature of F4, you don't really need to store a single polynomial ever. And it, it's kind of a burden if you do that. That was my experience. So I got rid of the polynomial class. And every, every polynomial is stored within a list of polynomials. Yeah. Another interesting feature is that polynomials don't store monomials. So if you, if you see this diagram, the only connection between list of polynomials and, and monomials is leading monomial. So only the leading monomials are stored. The monomials themselves are not stored in list of polynomials. And instead, what we have is a function that translates from monomials to, col to columns and from columns to monomials. So the, the coefficients are stored in a matrix, and then you have functions that translate from column to monomial or from monomial to column. Mm, so basically you don't have to store monomials at all. Um, yeah, so the leading monomials are stored only for efficiency reasons. It's not really necessary, but it speed ups the, the process if you have the leading monomials pre-computed. And monomials is a little bit interesting. So, so let's talk about monomials a little bit more. How monomials are stored. This is perhaps the most, uh, the only unusual thing about my implementation, really. Uh, so mo monomials are have two representations. There is one representation as a map. Uh, so from variables to degrees, so x1 to the power of 1, x3 to the power of 2, nothing unusual there, it's just a map. But then the second representation is as an index, I call it an index representation, so it's just an integer. And where does this integer come from? What, does, what has to do 14 with x1, x3 squared? Well, what happens is that I store all the monomials. I basically store all the monomials, pre-compute the monomials, and store them. And so here, x1, x3 squared happen to be the monomial number 14 in that vector. So that's the index representation. And so when you say map representation, do you mean vector? Uh, 
so uh, STD map. Yes. 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 So pairs, basically. Um, so, so with these representations, it's really easy to compare two monomials. Right? It's, it's quite trivial. Um, how do I do multiplication then? So I also store a, a multiplication table for the monomials. So this multiplication table tells you how to multiply, for instance, if you have x1, x3, and you want to multiply it by x3, you get number 14, which is x1, x3 squared. Okay? So, so multiplication is just uh, table lookup and it, the, the order it takes to compute is the degree of the monomial. Um, now, th th there are many problems with this implementation of a monomial, of course. So one thing is that you, you have to be able to store all the monomials. So you have a, what I, what I do is I do it up to a certain degree. Um, and this works for examples that are relatively dense. If you really have very high degree monomials appearing and very sparsely, then this might be a problem if you're not able to store them all. However, the truth is that mostly you, you should be able to store all the monomials up to a certain degree. Uh, so this is just one vector that you pre-compute. And then the multiplication table is just one for each variable, one vector for each variable. So it's not, it's, high, it's not so much, really. Um, so just make sure I got this right. So you are computing all monomials of a certain degree, not just those that you actually need for the monomials you have. So currently, that's what I do. Okay. But of course, if you could just store the ones you're using. But then you would have to maintain it in a smart way. So you would have to insert sometimes when new monomials appear. But that should not be a big deal. And of course, you could do something like this basically for, for each list of polynomials. And you avoid having to rely on a single string for all monomials. But then there are other issues.
Yes, and, and the multiplication table, you only have to produce it up to one degree before the largest degree. So that's not a big deal either. And so now I'm going to talk about the, the matrix of so the linear algebra package, what I do a linear algebra. And first, how matrices are stored. <coughs> so the, the storage is, um, the data structure is adapted from, from this book from 89 by Duff et al., um, which is called a direct met method for sparse linear algebra. Uh, so, so it's something like ancient history. So the matrix is stored simply as an unordered set of triplets, uh, the coefficient, the row, and the column. And then there are pointers that connect the entries in the same row, allowing traversal of the row in an arbitrary order. So you have some links that connect across the rows. That's, that allows you to traverse it. Um, and the same for the columns. However, they don't have to be ordered. You, you, I don't impose that there's an order on them. You just have some links, but they can jump around. And this is for, for saving uh, speed, saving time when you are inserting fillings or when you are uh, deleting elements. Uh, you don't have to maintain a, a, an order. And then there's a vector that specifies the first entry of each row and each column. So you have some anchor point where you know the, the, root, the row starts, so you can traverse it from there. <laughs> so here's an example. Here's a matrix. Here are the values stored in some order. They don't have to be sorted. And then we have a row 3, column 3. So A67 is in row 3, column 3. Nothing strange there, so just an order set of triplets. And then we have links across the rows and across the columns. So for example, uh, if we look at the last row, A squared connects us to the entry number four in the list, which is A233. And then this one connects us to the entry number one, which is a67. So there's there are simply links that connect us and allows us to traverse across the row. Those are the link row. And there's there are links for the columns as well. And then some anchor points where to start from traversing. So for example, again for row three, we have to start at position six. So here we start position six, we start with A squared. So uh, it's a very simple structure and it is it allows you to do all the Gaussian elimination procedures very easily. Uh, traversing a column, looking for a pivot, things like that. The only thing that is not completely trivial is how you do how you add two rows. It's not totally trivial, but it's not too bad. So let me show you how to add two rows. Um, say we want to do these operations, add row two to row one. And we start with this matrix. So think of it, imagine it is stored sparsely and we want to add those two rows, add, add row one to row two. Um, so the first step is provide a full vector filled with zeros. And, and this full vector is, is like dense full vector. Okay? But the matrix is, is, is stored sparsely. And next, we load row 2 into the full vector. So load row 2 into the full vector. And that only takes time 
uh, proportional to the number of non-zero elements in row two. And it can, can be done in any order, you just traverse the row and load the elements into the row two. Next, we scan row one, adding the entry in the full vector of to row one and making the entry in the full vector zero. So we scan now the first row and we add the entry in the full vector to the first row. So for example here, you will scan row one, we will look at this one and then add whatever is in the full vector to the row one element. And then we make this entry zero. And that's what happens here. So zero and we get a three here. And then you scan one more time row two. And in this case, what you do is, uh, if the corresponding entry in the full vector is non-zero, then you produce a full uh, a field in in the in row one. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan row two, wherever there's an entry. If it is non-zero, we're going to have a field in. So in, in this one, there's a zero, so nothing happens. This one is non-zero, so we have a field in in row one. So that's this of these two appears here, adding these elements. So that's the procedure to, to add two rows in this representation. And you have to update the Yes, but a fill in is extremely easy to, to produce because the links are not ordered, so you just put it at the end of the of your at the beginning of your of your of your, of your linked list. So it takes constant time. So all these operations, like of adding a filling, would be constant time. So the, the total complexity of this procedure is just a, a proportional to the number of non-zero elements in row one plus two times the number of non-zero elements in row two. And which is quite good for the representation. Mm. Okay, so now finally the, the matrix redu reduction algorithm. Uh, it's also, so I, I looked at different uh, libraries, different options, different algorithms to do this. Uh, the book by Duff, uh, the paper by Lamarckian, this from 1990 about linear algebra for finite fields. I looked at, of course, Fogers, uh, a for paper and, and I, I tried different things. I couldn't quite figure out what was proposed in Fogere's paper. Uh, at that point, uh, I looked at the structure Gaussian elimination. It sounds like a good idea, but we have this restriction that we cannot really swap uh, columns. So uh, uh, we have um, the, the Markowitz criterion also looks like very promising for choosing pivots in a way that minimizes the number of fillings, but it, it was also not possible to do that because we're not allowed to swap columns, or, that, or that's what I, what I thought at that moment. So here is what I ended up doing. This is my, my hybrid uh, Gaussian elimination. This is what I ended up doing. So it's, it's a simpl simplified version of the structural Gaussian elimination. Or you can look at it as, as a simplified by Covid's criterion with a simple objective form in the language of, I don't know, that. Um, here's what it does. If it, it, it columns are split into two sets, light columns and de dense columns, and the next pivot is chosen in the leftmost non-zero column, so we start from left to right, go in order, and the row 
for the pivot is chosen to be the one with the minimum number of non-zero entries among the like columns. So it, it, it's very similar to structure Gaussian elimination, just go from left to right in order. Um, and the, the strategy aims at minimizing the number of fillings in the light columns while guaranteeing our original form at the end. So let's see an example of how this how this works, how this happens, what, what exactly I mean. So let's suppose we have this matrix. And so we declare some columns to be text and some columns to be light, somehow based on some criteria. Um, let's suppose that I chose those ones to be the light columns. Then I look at the first. So we're going to choose a pivot in the first column, and we simply count how many non-zero entries there are on e, on, on, among the uh, light columns. So for instance, here we have one, two, one, two, one, two. There's one in this one, and there's zero in this one. So this is going to be the row we're going to use for the pivot. <laughs> and we reduce using that pivot. And then we remove that column and row and continue. So the counts for the number of non-zero elements in rows and columns are updated. You don't have to really recompute them, but you update them as you remove things, as you create the things in that. Just a question. So you thought you already uh, count the non-zero elements of the row, or also of the column? So of the row. So the bottom is protected. This is both. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But in this case, since we don't have the freedom to choose any column, mm -hmm. we are forced okay. to start in the first column. So we just look at the number of non-zeros in the in the row. Okay. So, for experimental results, um, here are some some results. Of, so these are dense systems, randomly chosen. So. Uh, m equations and n variables, coefficients on GF two to the eight, um, and we are comparing uh, the, 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 speed, the the time for f four by magma singular Macaulay two and our own f four implementation. Um, and these are timings in seconds. So we see here uh, our implementation is <coughs> maybe twice as fast as singular, but three times slower than magma. So it's somewhere there in between. <coughs> as systems get larger, it is it gets better than than singular, but still lags behind a uh, Here are some more times. Exactly which one it is, but I know I tried different ones and I chose the best one that they provided at that time. So I, I put the best time and tried the different options they provided. Or, or yeah, something like that. So this is random 
and systems. Uh, we're talking about just a few thousand, maybe a thousand by a thousand, something like that in this example. Mm -hmm. Actually, like you know, like where like something being twice as fast is something that actually bothers us, right? So like something like I can I can wait 12 hours or six hours. That is something, like you know, like something a really big computation to see how. No, um, or I don't have results for that here. So here is the largest example I have for showing here. So 10 equations, 10 variables, random system takes 133 sec seconds with f with magnus f4 and takes 293 seconds from for from our implementation of f4. So it's it's not too far away, but still lags behind. The memory usage is also a little bit worse, a few times. Uh, the, the amount of paper. So there's still a lot of room, some, a lot of room for improvement, but what we got. Also, so the, the, but you can report the time devoted to the return of the and the time that you build on a PC and the product of the Yes, the, the next slide will, will show you a little bit of that. I, on the last slide, I only saw that you were fast or really fast on the last examples and think, now, what about simple and these examples? And so, I don't have time on this, but the, the behavior was, was more or less like that. So as you see, uh, our implementation is, is a little bit more stable in time, I but, but it, it also, like, it's very similar to, to similar. So it's not too, it's not much better than senior. It's just a little bit, and, and it's sometimes it's better, sometimes worse. So I'm really confused that it's better if you don't compose more significant data. I must say, this also about what Mark is it. It doesn't matter if it's one or two minutes, especially whether something is one or two days. Then it's getting a good estimation. So maybe there are better benchmarks. Absolutely. Absolutely. But usually the implementation becomes better with the examples. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that would make total sense. Yeah. Bigger examples we should run. I mean, so th this is what we have to do. This is just an example of how it runs. So yes, uh, again, in these examples, in these particular examples, compared to magma, a little bit slower, uh, not too bad, not too far, a lot of room for improvement. Uh, yes. So now, what? Well, here is a breakup of the time it takes for each one of the steps. In, in a single example, this is just giving an example of how the, the timings break. So doing the, the left and right sets takes 0.23% of the time. The symbolic preprocessing takes 5.7% of the time. And the edge long, the, the gauge elimination is taking 61% of the time. So there's, there's, this is dominating the, the timing. The, the uptake function takes uh, also some time, 32%. Uh, so there's, there's room for improvement there. And the indexing, which is just what I told you at the beginning of storing all the monomials at the beginning 
takes only 0.71%, so it's, it's not a big deal. This is one of those random ones. Uh, I think it's something like 11.10 or, or 11 or 10.10, or 10, one of those. One of the big ones, let's say. So all the time spent on constructing the matrix should be assumed that that's true? Constructing the matrix is if that's the by concept. Symbolic representation and left right. Okay, I guess yeah, okay. And so in update what criteria do you use? What update is the linear matrix? Yes. What criteria do you use for the matrix? So I, I use the update function from as explained in Becker's paper, in Becker's book. So this is this dates back to I think '89. Uh, the paper by the yes. But as as explained in Becker's paper, in Becker's book. So. There's a lot of room for improvement, and this is by no means to believe that this is a good version. This is some work in progress, and you know, if, if somebody finds something interesting from it, it's open. So we're not competing in, we, we cannot compete in time or in infrastructure, uh, but it, it's up there for people to play with it. And yes, hope you find it useful. A lot of room for improvement again. Uh, it would be nice to implement in other fields. It would be nice to implement other model orders. It would be nice to use uh, more benchmarks, try different things, and see how it behaves. Um, try other matrix reduction libraries. It would be interesting also. Uh, it, it would be interesting also as as was suggested in several talks, uh, to, to represent polynomials as a monomial times a, a polynomial, allow that in the implementation would be to be very useful. And of course, we should work on improving F4. So thanks a lot. The matrices are done end up being a sparse, of course. And the, the sparse, I mean, the sparsity, if I remember correctly, was below 10% usually. Uh, sometimes around 1%, the, the largest one. Entry is represented. So the non zero elements are, are just the field element stored. So you have as many as you have non zero elements. So it's stored sparsely, you only store the entries. How many bytes do you need per entry? Uh, so it's 256, you use one byte. And the indices? And the indices. So depending on how big the indices are allowed. So you might need a couple, two, four bytes, depending on how big the matrix is to get. So do you use a memory allocator that, that like, do you usually use allocate to like two of these blocks that are in the location? How do you allocate the memory? Uh, so the memory is, 
So the entries are stored in a vector, separate vectors, one, one for the entries, one for the uh, row index, one for the column index. Future work, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not right now, but you can do that. 